All right. So I get alerted the other day about something that's developing on TikTok and Instagram reels and whatnot, where there's a, a, a Asian guy who's apparently on the run and he's documenting it all on social media. He drove his car into his boss's uh, workplace uh, after being fired or something. And they're just telling me that this guy mentioned in one of the TikToks that part of his dream before he turned himself in was to do a no jumper interview. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I want to hear more about this story. Yeah, bro. I um, came out of Lowell, you know, with the Cambodians and shit. You're really from Lowell? I'm from Lowell, bro. That's crazy. I went to college in Lowell for a year. Yeah, I read about you. Oh, nice. You know, I'm, I'm related to a lot of like, uh, you know, bloods and crips out there. You know? Right. That yeah. was always the word out there is if you yeah. want to go ride the skate parks in Lowell, you got to be careful because yeah. the Asian gang members might beat the shit out of you. Yeah, no, I always stayed inside and um, just kept to myself. But, um, you know. I always did things right, and then one day on that nine to five, you know, I just decided to go ape shit and crash my whip. I mean, the boss's whip into the fucking building. Okay, let, let's do a little bit before that though. You said in some of the the reels that basically you were a really quiet kid, yeah, you just no, kept to yourself, no. but you kind of got bullied and picked on a yeah, bit. No, I I really did get bullied. I have good manners and all that shit, you know, for real, for real, like. I'm humble as you come, but, you know, I knew if I was to crash that car into that <laughs> building, I'll go viral. I'll be like a hood legend. Like, I'm going state to state, you know. I ain't never do do no drugs or, you know, party, but, you know, uh -huh. everyone invite me to the hood. Okay, let, just, let's let's just get there gradually. So you yeah. graduated high school? Yeah, yeah. From, okay. From the Vogue, GL Tech. Okay. And then you went to college or? No, nah, no. Nah, I just went straight to working. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. W what age were you when the situation happened with the uh, the gym and driving the car into the gym? It happened like four months ago. Like, how old are you right now? I I'm about to be 23. I'm 22 right now. Okay. And so what have you been doing since high school? What did life kind of turn into for you? Just re repeating nine to five. It's just a typical uh -huh. slave wage, you know, drives anyone crazy, you know? Life is boring. Boring, bro. All I did was play game and just, yeah, just work, go home, sleep, repeat, repeat, repeat. It's just monotonous. Any hoes in your life? No, I was a virgin before this journey. They say that virginity is on the rise in this country. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard, bro. Right. It's just hard to get girls to be interested in, in you yeah. when you don't have anything going on. Yeah, no. Never had girls interested in me. They always looked the other way. Definitely. And so you never partied? You never got into... A I never did anything, you know? I swear I was just... I was a mama's boy. My mom was overprotective because of the fact that, you know, my my family were into gangs and shit. So oh. I was supposed to be a doctor or, like, a mechanic or some shit, you know? And were you drawn to the gang thing at all, or...? I mean, to an extent, yes. It's just, you know, look at all these, you know, these dudes, you know, just living their life and just being free from a, a wage a wage slave, you know? Right. And you listen to music and that kind of I'll, glorifies it. Yeah, and yeah. I bet the girls were kind of into those dudes. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So you're just kind of like a lost kid throughout these years after high school and stuff, just sort yeah, of trying to yeah. figure I life just, out. I, I just had a lot of pent up like rage and anger because like I always did things right, you know? Why don't I get anything good out of it? You, you feel me? Like... It's not fair. What are you watching on social media and YouTube during this time period? I was just watching like, just like motivational stuff, you know, like focus on your dreams, your goals type shit, you know? Trying to get the motivation that would Trying help you figure motivation. something out. Yeah, figure something out, you know? Right. Okay. And so eventually you end up working at this gym. Yeah. What's it called? Orange? Yeah, Orange Theory. Orange Theory. And how long did you work there? Maybe like a week, and it's just on and off from past jobs that I hated, bro. Uh-huh. Yeah, bro. What did you hate about this job in particular? Honestly, it's just it's just built up of everything. It's just I'm tired of working for somebody. I'm, 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 I don't want, like, if I die, I die for my dream, not for somebody else's. You feel me? Like... <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel it for sure because when I was a young kid, I remember telling my mom that I was never going to have a job and she just laughed at me and said like, of course you're going to have a job. Everybody has a job. And I told her, no, I 
fucking hate working and I'm going to figure out how to not have a job. Yeah. And she said, okay, you know, good, good luck. Whatever. You <laughs> she know, laughed yeah. at you, right? Yeah. I mean, same she, thing with my mom, bro. Yeah. Same thing with my mom. It was all relatable, bro. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so I totally, uh, I, I relate to how you felt for sure. Having that frustration because working, especially when you're a person who like in my case, I just felt like I was meant to be doing something creative, something Same with here. my mind, something like that. But do you feel like you never really figured out what you were into in that regard? I mean, I always enjoyed like making people laugh, you mm -hmm. know, and I was like, shit, I hope I could turn this into like a, a comedy career or some shit. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I just want to make people smile with, with my, cause I edit all my videos and mm -hmm. you know, it's just, I, I know what people want to see. Had you been on social media prior to this incident? No, I haven't. Really? Yeah. So this happened and then you decided to make a TikTok and whatnot. I mean, I made the TikTok about the crash and then everything just blew up from there. And it's just like, I amassed about a quarter of a million followers on Instagram and TikTok total in about two months. Okay. But let's, let's just highlight. So you're working at the gym and are you hating the experience of working at the gym for any particular reason or like it's just i just whatever? i just tired of feeling like a bitch, bro i'm gonna be real i fucking hate working for anybody bro it made me feel like a fucking bitch. Hmm. and so then you uh this boss this guy that you were dealing with what in particular were his uh transgressions that piss you off just treat me like a slave like i'm i'm a peon like just dirt like nothing, bro. Mm. Yeah. And so then when you when you go to film that video where you declare that you're going to put a brick on your boss's gas pedal, what uh, what led to that? I just wanted to do it. <laughs> I just wanted to do it, bro. I fucking hate working for people. I, I hate it. And did you have this feeling like this is going to go viral? Like how, I knew it would go viral. To what extent was that part of it? I knew it would go viral because it's like... You know, every, most people are, are like middle and lower class. You know, they they, they fucking hate their job. They're like, man, f this boss, I, I want to smack him in the face. Like, or just do something horrible. I want, you know, I, I knew I wouldn't get into too much trouble because no one was hurt in the process. You know, zero people were harmed. The only thing that was harmed was the fucking building. But how did you know that nobody was going to be harmed when you... Because it was closing time. How did you get his keys he he told me to go get something from his car. Okay. You know, I I was an auto tech in Devoke, Geotech. You know, I know how to sabotage some shit on the gas pedal and all the other stuff. So you get in the car and kind of like line it up so that it's facing the front of the building. Yes. And then you take a rock and put it on the gas pedal or a brick. Yes. Where'd you get the brick? There's cinder blocks everywhere in Lowell. You can find, <laughs> it, you can find it everywhere, bro. How do you get out of the car in order to pull this so, off? So, you know, I, I set everything up, you know, he did the remote starter and then it just fucking gasses into oh. the fucking building like a Tom and Jerry thing. It was, it was fucking funny to watch. And so what happened? Like, did they just run outside and freak out on you? Or were you just standing there? I, I did, bro. But I, I knew it would just go in, bro. And so then... Do you hear from the police soon after? Or? Yeah, yeah. I get, I get uh, arrested shortly after. And uh, what? They just, the cops just show up at your house? Yeah, they arrested me. And what did they charge you with? Like uh, property damage, uh, defamation, a bunch of bullshit. Like mainly property damage. And did you ever go to court about this, or you just took off? Uh, I went to court for a little bit, and then one of my fans, you know, they 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 bailed me out, bro. Fans because you started social media accounts like right after this? No, I <laughs> I had an account. I didn't have anything on there. The first video I posted was the Orange Theory video, and it blew up. Okay. Yeah. And it uses like the clip of uh, the news when they were talking about it, right? Yeah. What was that like? Just seeing that shit go viral. It was like, it's crazy, bro. It's like, I really got recognition for, 
for just something like I, it made me feel like somebody fi like finally I get to like I don't know it's like I felt felt good and bad at the same time you know it's a weird feeling it's not as extreme but it strikes me as almost like a school shooter type thing <laughs> where your life just feels so meaningless and you hate the yeah, world around no. you and and you just want to lash out and obviously it's not anywhere near as deranged as the school shooter thing yeah, yeah. but it, it almost kind of seems like a similar motivation i mean bro, i'm asian i'm uh, like the white kids you stick with shooting schools i don't do that shit <laughs> like yeah, i'm gonna be real thank you that's wild bro yeah i i don't want to hurt nobody i just want to live my life and turn this attention into something greater you know right but so then you just start going crazy on social media because I noticed that you like posted it on reels like the same fucking video. You posted it like 10 times and it seems like it went viral yeah, like, every I mean, time. I re-edited it, you know, remixed it just just because that's the that's, that's what people like to see, you know. Right. And so then uh, you just take. Oh, oh so you, you got locked up and then a fan bailed you out. Yeah. Some uh, TRG dude, you know, with a S2K. What's that? Yeah. Those gangs or something? Yeah, TRG, Tiny Rascal Gang. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's like, yo, us Cambodians got to stick together. You know, he, he threw a quick ban at the, you know, the bail, and I was out. Okay. Yeah. And what'd you do once you got out? Uh, I was on house arrest for like a week or two. <laughs> and With the ankle monitor? Yeah, I was, yeah, it's right here, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna auction this, bro, for real. Like yeah. after this whole shit, you should add it to the No Jumper, uh, you know, Trophy? archive of all I, the. I don't know, man. We got the gay crips orange sunglasses. <laughs> That's but anyway, cool. let's let's get back to this. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, what so, were we? so so when you decide to cut it off, um, I was like, Yo, if you guys make this video go viral, I will cut this shit off, and. It's really up to the fans, and then it blew up. I was like, F it, I gotta be a man of my word, and I cut that shit off. Spoiler, they wanted you to cut it off because they don't want the best for you. They just want to see you crash out because it's going to be more yeah, entertaining. I mean, <laughs> shit. The, the, the last few months have been legendary, bro. As much as you love your fans, realistically, a lot of times me. they don't really want the best for you. They want what's going to be the most entertaining. Yeah. Um, but mean, so then you just take off like did you have a you had a car or how how did you start moving around? So I had this buddy he was supposed to bring me to New York and then the car they popped a tire and I just I just kind of had to left him and then I just started walking towards like what was it? So I go from law I was walking towards Connecticut or some shit. Walking that would probably yeah, take you like then, a week to walk that far. And then you Maybe know like I was I made a I made a few videos. I messaged a few friends. I stayed at a few fans' houses, and I started just hitchhiking, bro. And were you going anywhere in particular? Or? Uh, I just wanted to go to L.A. honestly, and then just call it a day. It's just it'd be legendary to go from one side of the U.S. to the other end. But I just wanted to have some fun too. So I ended up going to like the strip club <laughs> for the first time. Mm. Just like. Just going crazy and just experimenting with drugs, bro. And had you never experimented with drugs before? No, my mom would beat my ass. <laughs> like she's like a, a strict Asian mom. Like right. do your homework, be a doctor, you know, don't do drugs. She would beat my ass, bro. So what drugs did you start experimenting with? Just a whole lot. Just, you know, marijuana, alcohol, fing DMT, shrooms, cocaine, just everything. It's like I never said no. I was just like, it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to prison anyway, so I gotta enjoy it while I can, you know. What did you like and dislike amongst all those different drugs? So, alcohol and marijuana just makes me feel tired, bro. It makes <laughs> me feel like, like brain dead, like autistic, you know. Right. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, and then cocaine. That's a hell of a drug. I never felt any anything amazing. That, but cocaine, yeah, but it's just it's too addicting. Like, <laughs> yeah. too addicting. DMT. Oh my god, I was looking at the ceiling, bro. Really? You know, popcorn ceilings, and they cast a little black shadow. Right. Okay. Yo, it was crawling everywhere. It looked like cockroaches and shit. <laughs> I was freaking out. Right. And then shrooms. Oh my god, it doesn't even feel like a drug. It's like, 
I don't know. It's like a spiritual journey. It's, it do, it, I do not consider that a drug. I consider that as like, I don't know, therapy. That had a big impact on you? It really did. It, hum it, it like changed my perspective, you know? Definitely. Um, okay. And so how many, how much time do you realistically think that you would actually get for driving the car into the front of the building? Because I'm going to be real with you in this day and age, I feel like that's the kind of thing that I could very easily see you, you know, getting a, a decent lawyer and getting off with like yeah, probation yeah, or like a no, fine or, or restitution a, and shit like that. I've never done a crime in my life. Exactly. I'm an angel. Well, yeah. not anymore. <laughs> but, uh, like, I, no one died, bro. It's not like, I, right. Like, I, I, I'm basically the Asian take, but I didn't kill anybody, you know? Right. Every state's different, but I feel like in this day and age, it seems like they're not really, like, as eager to throw people in prison as they used to be. Yeah. But, so what do you think's going to happen when you go to court eventually? Because you're out here acting like you're about to go do 10 years when it doesn't really seem <laughs> realistic to I mean... Me. It's marketing, you know? It's yeah. just something I have to push out, you know? That's what people want to see. That's why people want to, they f*** with me, you know? Right. Yeah. Damn. So you went to the strip club, but you didn't actually lose your virginity? I did lose my virginity. In the strip club? No, not the strip oh. club, but, you know, with this clout comes groupies, you know? Really? Yeah. How many? So far, just a good five girls. Five? Yeah, That's I might have serious. a few kids on the way, you feel me? Like, well, you've been running up in there and nothing? Yeah, bro, like, you ever heard of Genghis Khan? I mean, yeah, but not in a sexual manner, really. Yeah, well, you know, he went from, you know, kingdom to kingdom, busting in bitches, you know? Like, I'm trying to be the next Genghis Khan. So, right. Yeah. Okay. I've been going just state to state, so for now, <laughs> it's just the U.S. <laughs> right. Damn, so what was it like losing your virginity? Honestly, I, I'd rather just beat my meat. Like, really? <laughs> it's just, some girls is mad loose. And they smell fishy. I think I was just f***ing horse, bro. Yeah. I mean, if a girl's going to f*** a dude because he's going viral for being on the run on social media, I mean, yeah, I was she might be f***ing a lot of other dudes, too, because that's kind of like a low ball. Fuck. <laughs> you think I should go get checked out, bro? <laughs> uh, I mean, realistically, as a dude, you can kind of just, like, monitor your and if you start to get any kind of like drips or like sores or anything, then you should be worried. But besides like AIDS, you're probably just, you're just not going to know <laughs> unless you get it. Oh, if, or shit. if you get it, you're going to know. Okay. Damn. Yeah. But yeah, so I've been feeling a little itchy. I'm not going to lie. Really? Yeah. Like what part itches? Like the pubes? Like the shaft, bro. The shaft. Yeah. <laughs> Like he said, the shaft. Yeah, bro. <laughs> the shaft. It just. I mean, okay. So, elephant in the room. You're saying that these bitches got loose pussies. Yeah, bro. Is there a possibility that they have normal size pussies and you just have a below average size? No. Like I'm five five. The height one is somewhere else, bro. Really? Yeah. So you're pretty well endowed. I'm pretty sure. Because you know, there's like stereotypes about Asian guys. I'm not saying that they're true. Yeah, no, no. I'm my my father was a horse, bro. So I got a horse. Your dad had a big Yeah, bro. Really? Damn. I remember thinking my dad was big when I was a little kid. Yeah, you know, you shower with your father, you know, it has some bonding time, mm. you know? Then I get older and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, maybe not, yeah. not so much. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, how long in total have you been on the run now? Man, I don't even know. It's, these days just blur because it's just, you know, most... Most people lives that are like, well, what I do basically, I move fast. Like I do everything. It's just it's super fast. I don't. I barely get sleep, bro. Like mm -hmm. I I pop mad Adderall before I got here, bro. <laughs> How's that going? I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not sleeping? What's uh? I just I'm scared if I sleep, you know, I, I'll miss out on the fun, you know, with the bitches, the drugs, the partying. Right. I just want to live my best life because I don't know when's my time to, you know, go. I mean, I guess you do. You, you kind of have like the principal dilemma in life right here in front of you is that you could either make your life all about consumption and and, and hedonism and just, you know, try to get pussy and just fucking, you know, live your life based around that. Or... You could kind of get more serious about your responsibilities and being an adult and go get yourself a fucking Jordan Peterson, clean your room book, and, uh, you know, maybe, like, 
get more serious about, I don't know, school, a job, trying to eventually get into a more serious relationship. But I feel you that there's like a, a degree of, um, you know, where you, you just don't want to like settle into this traditional American life and you just want to kind of yeah. live this crazy life. Do you feel like this is stuff you have to get out of your system before you can attempt to like go back maybe, to normal? Yeah, and create like a, a serious Honestly, life. Like, is there part of you that wants to have a family or be a dad? Yeah, or, of course. Who doesn't? Everybody wants right. a family and all that stuff. It's just I never got to find out what kind of person I was during my you know teenage years. Mm. So because my my family was strict, I never got to go outside. I never got to figure out who I am as a person. So you know, I just wanted to. Figure it out right now. Mm. I, I've done, I've done uh, some crazy stuff that was like I thought I could never do. Like talk to women, you know, l like learn lessons in life. I never got to learn lessons. My father was an alcoholic. He was in the round, bro. Mm. You know. Yeah, I mean, do you think that you would be able to go be a computer programmer after this and just have this memory in the back of your head? Like hell yeah, I did that. I drove the car into the gym I f five girls i got a std <laughs> i did cocaine now i can just go be a, a normal dude i mean shit anything's possible you know like even if you got a background you could get into some companies right if i wonder by the skill you know right do you think that that would hold you back just being on the record of i mean it could be a felony i don't know shit. it doesn't really seem like a felony to me maybe yeah. Although, on the other hand, I guess, like, you know, you did kind of put a bunch of people's lives in danger. If they were able to, like, you know, convince the judge that you, you know, attempted violence upon these people. There was maybe. no one in that building. No one? No one. I mean, no one there is kind of, that's that's kind of compelling. Because yeah. I feel like even if there's, like, a couple people there, they're still going to be able to paint the picture of, like, it could have yeah, killed them. Right. So what's left for you to do now before you... Turn yourself in. I don't know. I lived a full life. I, I like, I've, I went from the, you know, this fucking incel virgin playing video games all day to this fucking hood legend. Like, <laughs> I'm invited to every hood across America, which is fucking insane because I'm not even, like, from the hood, but it's just, they like my story. You know, they go, like, hey, that's Amigo Chino. He's, he's, a, he's real as, you know? Where'd you get the Amigo Chino name? Um, so I didn't I didn't really hang out with um the other Asians, so I hung out with a lot of Spanish dudes and you know, they said Amigo Chino is here, you know? It just stuck with me. I mean, you're all Asian, right? You're not you're not an amigo. Uh predominantly just Cambodian and just a little bit of Chinese, but mainly Cambodian. Right. I mean, either way, you could always be a friend. Yeah. So you could always be an amigo to somebody. Yeah, I, I like to be friends with everybody. I don't judge people for their sexuality, political views, or race. I just want to party with everyone because no one accepted me for who I was. And so. to be fair, the, the most famous amigos that come to mind don't even speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah, it's the funniest. <laughs> Rest in peace, takeoff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I feel like you're uh, you're in an interesting position where you can kind of like. Just make your decision about where you want to take your life, what you want to do with yourself. And I don't know. I guess I would I would encourage you just because I've seen this story play out a million times before. Don't think that drugs are going to make you happy in the long run. And don't think that just getting large amounts of is the meaning to life. Because, yes, it's nice. Yes, it's fun. Yes, even like the drug doing and shit. I feel you, man. That shit is an important thing, I think, for a lot of people to get out of their system to just know what it's like to party and stuff. And a lot of people want to kind of put themselves through this like ritualistic test to see if they can survive torturing their body with drugs and alcohol for like their 20s. Uh, I know I certainly did. But in the end, I don't know. I just don't really think there's there's much to it. And the other side of like addiction and, and going through all that. It sucks, and I know you're brand new to it, so you don't really know how bad that shit can be and how difficult it can be to get off drugs and shit. And uh, you know, you could very easily end up a drug addict and and have that basically run your life at a certain point. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's not just about the the 
and the drugs is, is, is about the journey and me developing as a, as a man because I'm learning lessons and I'm connecting with people, you know. Mm. Just, I used to judge people a lot, but n now I'm just, everywhere I go is the same people. It's just like we're all human, like, you know, we're all the same. I saw you climbing that huge tower. Uh, yeah. What the fuck was that, dude? That's that was scary. Um, honestly, I just wanted to, like, I want to make myself really strong. Like, I want to face my fears, face anything that scares me. And heights is everybody's fear. Mm. I was like, man, if I don't do this now, then I'm never going to face it. Like, shit, hitchhiking is scary, bro. No one does that i don't know if i get picked up by jeffrey dahmer or some shit bro you get picked up by anybody weird oh f yeah i had a friend who was hitchhiking back in the day and uh the guy that gave him a ride asked him if he could suck his d <laughs> and he what was like fuck? he was just like nah man i'm cool <laughs> 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 it was like amazing just hearing him tell me the story so that you didn't run into that uh, no okay. no doubt you would remember that I, I'm not sucking no I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> F that. Right, because I heard you diss Lil J. Lil J. Lil Tay. Oh, you diss Lil Tay. Lil Tay. Oh, I thought you diss Lil J. Lil, who the hell is Lil J? He's like a gay Chicago drill rapper. What the f***? <laughs> <laughs> what the, what the f I mean, he's not gay, but there's like video of him with like, uh, you know, punks, like little masculine ass dudes on his lap in prison and shit. And like, uh, he has supposedly like dated this trans woman for... A period of time and a bunch of other stuff, but he's like a killer. Like he's like a, he's what the. the I mean, allegedly, but you know he's the real deal. Like he's definitely he's known to let his gun clap. Pow, pow, pow. Let his gun clap <laughs> after after he clapped men's cheeks. I mean, yeah, yeah, probably. That's wild, bro. That's that's a different type of gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy because we've we've just known about him as the street legend for all these years, and then all of a sudden you just find out he's a booty goon. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but okay, yeah, everybody everybody mistakes you for being all well, kinds of different Asian, huh? Yeah, no, freaking. They say I'm related to Lil Tay, mm. Rice Gum, BTS. It's like, dude, what the? F I'm not I'm not related to all these Asian influencers. Like, right. stop being. Racist. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of doing it to yourself with the mask right now, though. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, that's probably, like, the most common form of casual Asian racism out is just, you know, saying that everybody looks the same or yeah. acting like mistake people for it. And I play poker. There's a lot of Asian guys. <laughs> and I've definitely seen people try to get that joke off and have it not go well. The, mm -hmm. you look like this other guy because you're both Asian thing. <laughs> doesn't really play too well these days we gotta stop asian hate yeah facts stop asian hate you ever heard of east movement no what's that it's a stop asian hate organization in uh lowell massachusetts china mac went to go interview them oh yeah wow Th those are my people uh the east movement you a china mac fan me um uh, yeah no i like how he goes out to um other um hoods and he shows the good side of it me i kind of do the opposite i show the bad side the the, the mm. hoes the drugs like yeah yeah i mean he already uh was in prison for all these years and shit and has been in various gangs oh shit yeah so i mean he's kind of on the other side of it yeah he's old so he's like 42 shit you a china mac agent huh are you here on behalf of china mac <laughs> Um, no, <laughs> Fuck no, <Okay>. no, <laughs> sorry. No. Um, okay. There's a little bit of a, a theme in some of your videos though. I have to admit where it kind of feels like you're, you're like playing the victim to the fans a little bit where you're like, Oh, you guys aren't <laughs> supporting me enough. Like you guys got to do uh, I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of a different, uh, style of eliciting support from them. I mean, they want to see crazy shit. They got to give me some money to throw money at strippers, you know, do all this crazy stuff and travel. I travel to go see my fans. My fans want me to go to go see them. Like go state to state, party with my fans, mm. uh, building a, a strong community. You how, know? how do you accept donations? How do, how do people give you money? They, 
they either buy my merch or they just hit my cash app or Venmo. Okay. You know? And people do send you a lot of money? A decent amount. It just gets enough for gas money and through the day. It's nothing crazy. Are you broke right now? You said you're broke. Yeah, bro. In the TikToks. I'm broke, bro. Like, How much money do you have right now? I have about like 200 bucks, but that's that'll get me by the week if I'm like, you know, frugal. Who's this guy you're here with right now? Oh, that's that's one of the fans I met on the journey. <laughs> How long have you guys known each other? About two days. Okay. And how did you get in touch? What's he been doing? Driving you around and shit? Yeah, I go fan to fan. And it's just, it's casual. It's just whatever I need is I hit up the fans. They got tea, weed, food, a bed, anything I want. I have a crazy fan base. Did he supply you with any women yet? Nah. So he's only halfway doing it. Yeah, he'll probably go to Skid Row, get some, you know. If you f*** a girl on Skid Row, oh my God. <laughs> that would be What's so wrong funny. With that, bro? What's wrong with that? <laughs> they're because bitches too. They're bitches too. <laughs> it's just like the breed of women that are selling pussy downtown. It's a lot worse than probably any other stroll that you might find in North America, I'm guessing. Uh. Really, you'd have to go to the third world to find anything that, ugh, I don't know, man. Downtown. The whole place stinks. I lived down there for a while. Things like what? Like sewage and just is that diarrhea. The pussy? Is that the pussy or like just the environment? You know, I've never smelled any street pussy in downtown LA. And I'm going to really hold on to that and really hope that I don't. But it's out there. Um... Okay, so what are you doing after this? Where, where are you going to go? Uh, honestly, I was going to turn myself in, but, you know, I'm, I, I kind of getting cold feet. I kind of just want to go do more crazy shit. Like, honestly, I think my next dream is to do shrooms with Joe Rogan and talk about the Roman Empire. I think that would be dope. As Seems kind of unrealistic. Yeah. Oh, well, if Most you of the Joe Rogan part. You could definitely do shrooms and talk about the Roman Empire with just somebody. Well, I, I just think Joe Rogan is just up there. And I just want to be around that dude, bro. Yeah. He's pretty exclusive. At David this point. Cho. David Cho inspired me to go hitchhiking and shit. Oh, really? Yeah. You ever heard of David Cho? Yeah, but what? He had like a TV show or something about it? Or? Yeah, he was hitchhiking and shit. I just think that's badass, bro. Mm. Yeah, he inspired me. I watch a lot of David Cho videos. If you could spend all this time hitchhiking and not end up having to forcibly suck a dick. I feel like that's a W. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, I'm i very selective on who picks me up. Like, mm. they have to have, you know, validation. They have to have a certain amount of followers. And if, they, if they're a rapper, you know, oh, okay. They just want me, they, they want to use me to uh, shout them out and stuff. So mm. it's reasonable. It's like. There's this Asian girl I know, and I was just looking at her website, and she's just straight up, you can just buy time with her. Like, you can just buy fucking her on this website. Really? It's like the sickest thing ever. Well, what's the website name? I don't even know, but... You gotta let me know later, bro. Yeah, I mean, it costs, like, at least, like, a couple thousand dollars to spend a couple hours with her. What the fuck? I'm just gonna go skid roll, fuck that. Yeah, it's definitely a different price point. I just have never seen a girl be that open about escorting. I think it's kind of amazing. That is wild, bro. Yeah, maybe you could get there at some point. Be an escort? Well, purchasing an escort. Oh. Or maybe you could be an Shit, escort. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being a porn star. If a girl, like a really nasty girl, wanted to pay you like a hundred bucks to f would you be down? Like, nasty in what way? Like, pussy or body? <laughs> like, body type. Like, 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 like morbidly a, obese. Like, shit. I and mean... Smells like shit. I don't know. Like, a bad. A hundred dollars is a hundred dollars, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, f the thing about downtown is that people shit and piss everywhere, and then it gets like foggy and it rains and shit. And like, what the what f fog is like the water from the fucking ground. And I don't, I don't know, but like, it just smells so bad whenever it gets foggy. And I felt like it got foggy a lot down there. That's disgusting. Yeah. So that's the environment that you might be buying ass in. I don't know. Um, what's your message to the people of Lowell? Um, I got a message for my high school teacher, 
suck my d bitch, you fucking bitch ass. You 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 said I'll be nothing but a janitor, bitch. Look at me now. <laughs> suck my dick, Mr. Skins. Suck my d yeah. <laughs> What did he do? He just he just well, told he, you you weren't gonna be none? Yeah, he told me I was gonna not be nothing. He brought me in front of the whole class and he was like, Look at this kid. Look at him just he fucking humiliated me and it stuck with me to my soul like it mentally scarred me like because i was very like uh humble and respectable i kept to myself in the corner you know do my homework and shit and he did that shit to me and i just never left my fucking brain it just makes me go crazy bro i don't know it's just i showed i looked up to him i showed him respect he should show me respect mm -hmm. and lead the way you know but no mr higgins what are you doing yeah and now you're on a podcast in a shiesty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy turn of events. Oh, fuck you, Mr. Higgins. No, I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel like I understand your disdain for the modern world and the environment that we live in, in ca under capitalism, where you got to get a shitty job and probably work at it for like a long ass time before you could even advance within the confines of that shitty job. I just want freedom, bro. Mm, freedom. Freedom is hard to come by. We're all slaves to something, bro. I just want freedom to to do what I want and just to just travel and make connections along my journey, bro. Mm. Well, I wish you the best. I don't know exactly how you're gonna put it all together, but I'll figure you'll out. You'll figure bro. something out. I'll figure it out. Definitely, man. Uh, any last words for the people out there? Uh, shout out to my my brother. You know, John, love you. Shout out to my mama. Um, Pretty much it, you know, focus on your dreams, your goals, you know, don't rot away at a nine to five, you know, just do your thing, you know, that's it. Shout out to all the Cambodians. Yeah, shout out to all the Cambodians and, and, and Lowell, bro. Love y'all. I'll be back soon. Grew up around some good Cambodians. Yeah, no, Cambodians are peaceful folk, had except for the gang members. I had a homie named Niang. 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 Yeah. That mother could climb a tree like you never seen that's before. Crazy. I had a tree in my yard my whole life. My whole life growing up. Just like a fucking straight up and down tree, about like this wide. No branches sticking out the side of it, right? Yeah. Never in my a million years in my whole life did I ever even think about climbing this fucking tree. This yeah. dude is is walking home from school one day. <laughs> climbs up that shit. It's like two stories high. Climbs that shit Wait. so fucking fast. I'm like, oh, you like we're like 10. I'm like, you are on a level of upper body strength that I cannot even imagine. Yeah. And that's when I understood. Wait, you, you've interviewed Stupid Young, right? I got white boy genetics, and he had crazy Cambodian tree climbing yeah, we genetics. Climb. Is, it, is it a thing? I mean, we always climb to get bananas and shit in Cambodia. <laughs> like some, that's maybe, how you understand it? That's how I look at it. Like, so you grew up in Lowell, so you didn't yeah. really. I never saw that, but I saw documentaries and shit on right. YouTube. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I interviewed Stupid Young. I was just talking to him the other uh, day. I know one of his uh, his homies, uh, I think, Beachy? Yeah. Hmm. Down low. It, Cambodians have a really tight-knit community, so we all know each other. News spread fast, you know. Maybe that's the next step. Move out here and just kick it with the Asian boys. Yeah. No, I, I f*** with everybody, you know. It's just, I don't choose sides. I'm a party with everybody. That's not an option. They're gonna send you on a mission. <laughs> You're gonna have to take somebody down. Like who? I don't know. You're not gonna Who's get to target? choose. <laughs> 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 Shout out, stupid young. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No Rico. Um, wait, how'd you break your hand? What's going on there? Um, <laughs> so I was in Colorado. I was chilling with um. People in Colorado are a little different. Like it's like, the altitude. Either the altitude, the water, or combination is like people are a little, little like aggressive. Like when I was out there, it was a fucking shooting at a mall, bro. Like, mm. yeah. But anyways, that could uh, happen anywhere, really. I, I, I was a uh, a fan picked me up and let me uh, stay at his house for a little bit, and uh, just crazy, bro. We we were on a motorcycle. I was off the motorcycle. He crashed it. I had to pick up the motorcycle and drive that back to where he was, to, to his house and shit. Like, and I was going 60, 70 on the highway, no, no, no helmet, no gloves. Like, it's my first time. I don't even know how to drive a car, bro. But I, I picked up that bike because I didn't want my fan's bike to be stolen. And then 
Next day, after, you know, he gets out the hospital and shit, he accuses me of stealing his motorcycle keys. And then him and three of his boys convinced me to, like, you know, cash app them or sell them money. And they they had me, like, pinned, in, like, like, cornered and everything. And what's it called? Anyways, they were trying to steal my money. I was stranded. And I had to fight. I had to fight the dude that took my money because I, I had zero dollars. You had fought him one on one or I, they jumped you? So I pull him out the car. I tell him, give me back my, my shit. And then I just start beating his ass in front of his friends. His friends are too scared to hop in. They're like, what the f Amigo Chino's beating his ass. You want to see the video? <laughs> it's funny as f okay. It's like, it, it's a tiny short Asian man beating up a cowboy really yeah they're all and these started out as fans they were fans but they but they went bad on you they went bad on me bro I I would never steal from why would I go to back to his house with a bike and steal it like I could have just dipped off with the bike bro right like fucking yeah you don't want to live like that I broke my fucking hand <laughs> I just kept on going bro like I was, I'm a animal bro and so then you got it wrapped up at the at the hospital and i'm assuming no, that i went to one of my other fans houses she was a nurse and she just <laughs> you're just fully living on the fan yeah I, for I don't, everything everything's free bro i don't i don't need money i don't need anything all i need is my fans i love my fans i love y'all thank you for everything hold on i mean if they were down to put your fucking hand in a cast that's pretty that's, that's, that's good service it's real fans. Everybody smash the like button while we're here. This is, uh... Oh, shit. This is on social media? Uh, I oh. take it off. I got shadow banned. Oh, you're pounding on them. Yeah, bro. What the f***? My hand cracked. I just kept on going, bro. <laughs> why is he wearing cowboy boots? Yeah, he was he a, a cowboy. Yo, why are you beating the shit out of him? His homies weren't even going to help him? They were too scared, bro. They don't seem scared. They seem just, like, amused. Like, yeah, they yeah. seem like they just thought it was hilarious. Yeah. What the f***? Yeah. That was crazy. Uh, Holy shit. I mean, hey, that's, that's, like, best case scenario if you were able to, like, beat the f*** out of this dude in this, like, weird scenario and not yeah. have, like, a bunch of other dudes beat the shit out of you. Damn, you got I was lucky. ready, bro. I was ready for that shit. Yeah? Damn. You really are the Asian taker. <laughs> Although, to be honest, he killed a couple of people, so. I would never kill anybody. Oh, well, no that's No matter good. what, you know. Just scrap it out real quick. You know, call it a day. Do it yeah. like men. Don't kill nobody. You know, if you kill somebody, you're just killing yourself. You just go spend the rest of your life right away, bro. That's a positive message to the youth. Yeah, you don't got to kill nobody. Just scrap it out. Don't be stupid. Crit Max said never commit suicide. You could push. Don't kill someone. Yeah. That could be your slogan. Yeah, don't kill nobody. That's a positive message to the youth. Just beat their ass. <laughs> a lot of people need to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. All right, Amigo Chino, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, what's the Instagram for people out there? Um, Amigo underscore Chino 2, because my main account is f***ing shadow banned right now, because I posted that fight video. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram don't like that shit. Yeah, they do not. Damn. All right. Amigo Chino, thank you very much. Very positive, motivational story for the youth. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Ankle monitors on deck. Let's go.